What's up? So in this video of my AI series in Unreal Engine 5, we're going to cover over very quickly the damage perception system so that when your AI receives damage, they can respond to it. And if you were here for the previous video, we set up basic sight. Instead of just doing a line trace, we actually use the AI perception system. Since last time I did this, my audio didn't record. We're going to record it again. Vamos. All right, let's get started. So in our project file, third person blueprints, we're going to start by going to our enemy section and our enemy AI. We want to find our BP AI enemy controller and we're going to go into the AI perception component. We're going to scroll over to senses config, click that bad boy, open this up, scroll down. We're looking for this little guy right here that pops up and we're going to say damage sense config. Bring that down and you look inside there, it'll be red. Let's throw a 10 on max age. I cracked a joke last time about being shot in the shoulder and forgetting about it after 10 seconds, but it's not as funny the second time around since this is the second time I've had to record this. So let's keep it going. All right, so now that we've done that perception, AI sense damage, we're basically gonna copy the same sort of pattern we have set up for sight. So, we're going to do another check right here. We do a Boolean equal, double tap equal sign. And we're going to say, does this equal AI sense damage? We're going to drag a thing off there and we're going to branch branch from this false. Cause it's, if it's not site check, if it is damage. And if that's true, let's say, let's do a print for now. We're going to say uh, AI was damaged, exclamation points, make that orange, and cool. So now we want to be able to trigger this event. So I'm actually going to start on the player controller this time, keep this a little simpler. So we go to our BP player controller. And in here we have these little button presses. So let's copy and paste this one. We're going to cause damage to all enemies. And we're going to say, okay, if you press the button two, we're going to get all enemies. Again, don't do this in a normal project. It is not efficient, but for practices and testing things, it's perfectly fine. We do this, get all of that. We're going to report a damage event. I'm going to burp. I've been drinking sparkling water. There we go. And let's say damage amount 30. That's good. Let's set the instigator to be ourself. That'll tell whoever receives the damage event to know that this player controller is what damaged them. To get the damage location, we're going to just use the player's location. So get player pawn, get actor location, and plug that in there. Is there anything else? We're not gonna worry about hit location for this event, but if you're doing projectiles, that will be important possibly later on if you wanna like apply a force and launch them. Although there's other ways, you wouldn't really use a damage event to do that. But anyway, there's reasons for it. Get player pawn, player index zero. This is actually not a good thing to use because of the player index. So if you're playing a multiplayer project, avoid this because this zero index, but for this tutorial, it's fine. We only have one player and that's us. All right. So this gets all actors of class causes this report damage event. So our enemy controller is attached to those actors. It should trigger this perception updated, which will come on through here and say AI was damaged when we press two. So let's hit play. Press two and it says AI was damaged. Cool. So we know that part's working. Thankfully, <laughs> now we need to do something with it. So in our AI was damaged section of the AI enemy controller, let's create an event. Let's get our controlled pawn. And they're actually, we're going to use get controlled pawn on the other one because that's better practice than this get player pawn. 
Pro tip. Pro tip for multiplayer. All right, get controlled pawn. And we're going to cast to base enemy. And what are we going to do in our base enemy class? Well, we want to call a damage event. And so we need to make one. And in order to make one, we have to get the enemy class. And the enemy class is in the enemy folder under the blueprint class base enemy. So in here, custom event, we're going to say, what did you say? Like receive damage? Sure, receive damage. Cool. And what do we want to do? Oh yeah, create a health variable. I'll make a new one while we're doing that. So health float and we're gonna get our health and we're going to set our health and in our receive damage event we're gonna create a variable call it a float and call that damage amount so this will be the amount of damage passed into our AI characters pawn the base class this little dude and we want to get our health and subtract this amount from it. So if you have 100 health, you take 10 damage, then you set our health to be now 90 because it's 100 minus 10, 90. So this is our receive damage event. Damage events. Very cool. And we're going to add a print string. Let's grab this guy Whoop. so that we know this is ticking without having to debug everything or add breakpoints to everything, we'll call that string AI damaged. Just the longer I do this, the more unhinged my little strings become. And let's make it, I don't know, whatever color you want. We're going green just because we want it to, let's make it red. Red's usually associated with damage. Let's go, boom, boom. So now in our player controller, we press to, we find them, we report the damage event. That will go through the AI perception thing, which will be the updated. Spit through here, call this class. Now we need to call this damage event. And that damage event is called receive damage. Now we need an amount. That amount is the strength which is in this AI stimulus, which comes from here. And if you haven't broken that, you just drag it out and say break stimulus. So we'll go into strength, plug that in over here. You can double click these wires to drag and drop them and tidy that up a bit. So everything's nice and lined up. Cool. So this should work unless I'm missing something, which I might be. Happens all the time. So we're here, receive damage, goes into here. We need to set our base health. I have it set at 50. That's fine. You can set it to whatever you want. And yeah, let's test it. So when we press two, something should happen. Cool, AI was damaged and AI damaged. Press it again. Awesome, so we're doing theoretical damage to our AI. Now let's actually do a check to see if their health drops below zero, then we'll create a death event, which will wipe out the AI and stop all their logic from continuing on the behavior tree. So in our controller, we call this receive damage event, which is in our base enemy class. This is where we're gonna do our comparison, making sure my audio is still recording. <laughs> So we're gonna check our health is less than or equal to zero. If it is, we're gonna do a branch, which is like an if-then statement. Let's see, if it's less than zero, we're gonna create a custom event. So right-click, custom event, death event. I'm gonna put this down here and call it from up here. Boom, death event, print string. We'll just say AI has died. We're gonna make this like a, I don't know, yellow. We're gonna get AI controller. And the controlled actor is controlled pawn. Not is pawn controlled, but 
get controlled pawn controlled pawn oh this is the pawn derp get self there we go sorry i thought we were in the controller but we're in the pawn we're getting the controller then we want to get the brain component do 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 we're gonna do a valid check just in case if our AI is a zombie, it might not have any brains. So if that is valid, we're going to stop logic. And the reason is because death will add a little delay and then we'll destroy actor. Whew, that was a mouthful. Okay. So if this is not valid, let's add a little print strings just for debugging purposes. And we'll say AI brain, we don't need us to be all capitals, capitalized brain component is invalid. Cool. Do, 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 do. All right, so I am going to add a debug statement at this breakpoint so we can just check this comparison. And for fun and profit, I'm gonna add one here too at this branch as well. Just see what things are, how things are moving along. So hit two, we trigger this because as I said, this goes in report damage event, it comes in through here. We say, is this, equal to damage sensing it's true ai was damaged go into the receive damage we check is it greater or less than or equal to zero that's false so it won't say anything hit play press two again and here this should be true because we're down to negative 10 health we'll call our death event and all this will go through i'm just going to hit play and then boom AI is destroyed. So that is the quick way of setting up a damage perception system in Unreal Engine 5. It's pretty much as easy as that. Um, from there, there's a lot of things we can do, but that's the basics. Them's there's the basics. So yeah, thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned a little something. I hope it helps you with your projects. If you liked it, leave a like and always subscribe. So in our next video, I am probably think we're going to set up like uh, patrolling, maybe basic states. States probably be its own video, so we'll do patrolling. And in that video, I think we should also set up, oops, um, player projectiles. And we'll trigger damage events on there. That way you know how to do that and don't have to like search some other video in case you're struggling with that because that would be annoying. And we like to avoid annoying things while we can. Hold on, I'm just disabling these breakpoints so I can run around and blast this guy from afar. All right, cool.